we are going to install this beautiful one piece flagpole. Who would do that? Why would you do, why? This is, this is taking a turn for the worst. Um, we have failed. And sometimes you have to improvise because your conditions may be different than the one shown in the video. Or let's say you need to put some handrail up. Hey, 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 hey! Minions, stop! Stop, stop! As you'll see behind me, the minions are hard at work already without any direction whatsoever. It's just probably gonna be an issue. When we bought the house, there was a beautiful flagpole in our front yard. And then we showed up to move in, no flagpole. I was very disappointed with the old owner for taking the flagpole that was clearly part of the sale but didn't pitch a fit. And so this beautiful flagpole, which is very hot, it's very, very hot. We are going to install this beautiful one-piece flagpole from Wyoming all the way to Florida on the top of a U-Haul. We're gonna put that in right here. And these gentlemen are going to assist. And luckily, because I hang out with the Haxman, he's got a great video on his channel, and I thought, you know what, I'll use all his tips and tricks to install my flagpole. Tools you're gonna need for today's project are a shovel, or maybe some post hole diggers, a uh, way to mix your concrete, and a level. That's about it. That should be all we need. I watched the video. I think that's about all he had. Oh, and one other thing, child labor. What did you find? They literally put, they put concrete in it. All the way around, all the way till here. Who would do that? Why would you do, why? Why? Why so much? Why so much concrete? The good thing is, is that my, from my experience as a fence builder, I bet we have a really, like a lot of concrete, but I bet it's like really shallow. That's my guess. Dude, that is a lot of concrete. This is not good. Okay. So you're probably asking yourself, well, surely a guy with shoes that bright has an intellect equally as bright. Why don't you just put the pole inside the hole? Ah. Uno problemo. Bloop. It don't fit. This is not going to be a typical installation. Here my whole plan was is to show all the easy ways that the Haxman could have done his flagpole easier and it turns out that's not going to work. This is this is taking a turn for the worst. Ooh, let's see how deep this is. Ugh, it's at least that deep. That's a lot of freaking concrete. The good news is I'm guessing it is probably only that much concrete it's almost the bottom i'm guessing we're just a smidge from poking right through you've literally been doing this for like 10 minutes and you're already complaining this is going to be a long process okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to drill holes all the way around this thing and see if i can poke through it because if i can get in even close to enough what i can do is set this in here and then use a hydraulic cement between the concrete and the sleeve to lock this in. Uh, basically a grout. We use it all the time in the fence building business to grout our posts in. We'll start drilling a bunch of holes. My original idea for this video was to say, did the Haxman get it wrong when he set his flagpole? Is there an easier way? And I wanted to answer the question, is there an easier way? The answer here is no, this is not gonna be easier. We either have to pull up this massive amount of concrete here, which seemed like a lot of work, or we can try and chip out some of this concrete and set a new sleeve inside of it, which is what we decided to do. So I've got all the holes drilled. We have one, two, three, four, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we have 16 holes drilled around the circumference of this. And I watched a video on Haxman's channel where he told us that the formula for calculating the circumference of a circle was like pi diameter, but I always knew it as two pi r. So which one of us is right? I think he's wrong. I think he got that math wrong. I don't know, I just drilled enough holes. And so we've got that step done. The next, next step is to chip out this concrete somehow. I have a bit here. But what I'm hoping is, is that if I just start beating on it enough, maybe it'll start cracking. I don't really know. I don't really have a good plan. I have a good plan for when the concrete's gone. That's where my plan really starts. 
Everything up until then is very poorly executed and thought out, so be prepared for that. Um, okay, well, let's try it. I think the first thing is, wow, that sleeve is actually quite tough. I thought that PVC would just shatter. I feel like in Wyoming that would have shattered. Well, that freaking worked like crap. Poorly executed plan number one, if you're counting. I would have liked that to just break, to be very honest. It's always easier to chip concrete into another hole, but when you don't have a good hole to start with, it makes it a lot more difficult. I can tell you that I'm glad I drilled larger holes rather than smaller. You can kind of put the bit at an angle and start off like this. And then it just kind of goes down, but the shaft stays inside of my already pre-drilled hole. So we can actually get pretty deep doing it this way. Uh-oh. And then you get your bit stuck. I feel like this is not making the problem easier. Now that we got the drill stuck, we'll get out the other tool. This is kind of like when you get your chainsaw stuck chopping down a tree. Oh, this is getting deep now. I got another idea. This is definitely not going to be easy. Having that piece of PVC in there is not helping me. If I was at home, I would just core drill this thing out and be done with it. Yeah, I got problems. 99 problems. Okay, I won. I got it out. Now we can keep trying to. The real question is what do I do when I get down there past this bit light? I also think I can't stop now because the world's counting on me to get this hole right. done the hard way. What do, you, what do you think you should do? Use a Harbor Freight jackhammer. <laughs> Chicago Electric for life. Are we in the defeat stage of this project? You go through different phases of life. This is that. This is that phase. Get out of my seat. Uh, I don't want to do this. The word you're Ah, well. Um, we have failed. I really wanted to dig this entire hole with the small tools that we had, but I was really, uh, I was deflated and I was getting heat stroke and I was over it. And the boy, him, well, he was trying to get me to buy one at Harbor Freight and <laughs> instead we settled and rented one from Home Depot. So we're gonna see how much faster it is to do this. Let it rip, tater chip. Power. I'm enjoying watching.
So, after much effort, we have finally gotten to the point where this thing wiggles, and I think I can kind of wiggle it. Oh, yeah. This thing being in there created so many freaking problems. It was awful. It was terrible. Another big one. That is definitely the bottom. We have the gravel rocks that are recommended for putting on the bottom. We live in a sandbox. I don't think the gravel's necessary at all. And I really don't care if the tube fills up with water because we're not in the frost area either where it's gonna freeze and crack. So gravel at the bottom of your flagpole? I say nay nay. Really, you think if we'd have got a jackhammer to begin with, this would have, this would have gone a little faster? I really underestimated PVC in the middle. I really totally underestimated that. Ciao, ciao. Boom. Step number one complete. Dig the hole. That took entirely too long. We're like four hours into this half-hour project now, all because. There was concrete and it was massive. I should have, I don't know, what was the first mistake I made? Not digging up the concrete or not going to get the right tool for the job? Where are we at on that, Hacks, man? I feel like you didn't really prepare me for what if I needed to replace my existing flagpole. That's where I'm gonna pick up and save all you folks, you fine, fine folks, some time. Get the right tool for the job, even if you have to go to Home Depot and rent it. Okay. Now that we're assured we will drain because we have gravel and dirt and nothing but a beach here or sand under here, we will start with the next step and on to the garage. So what we're going to use here is not my favorite stuff, but right here we're going to use some anchoring cement, some quickcrete anchoring cement. In our store we actually sell something called uh, Quick Rock and it's the same thing, it's much much cheaper and Actually, probably more purpose designed. Hey, hey. It is a lot better. It comes in five gallon buckets. It allows you to get more done and uh, will serve the same purpose. This is purpose built for doing, uh, for setting posts when you have to core drill into concrete or let's say you need to put some handrail up. Hey, 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 hey. Minions, stop. Stop, stop. So earlier I said something about raising your own help. Uh, I take that back almost completely. Minion number one and minion number three were having some issues because this job is so fun that they're fighting over who gets to do it. Anyhow, we're gonna mix some of this stuff up. We'll level our tube and it should be very fast and very easy. I don't know what this stuff looks like when we, ah, there it is. And if you didn't know this, every five gallon bucket's got a little tab. You just, then you don't have to cut all those slits. For the longest time, I didn't know that because I was an idiot. So usually this is the way it comes, comes in your little bags. This is what I like to use, just a mixing paddle. It makes it very easy. Okay, that's it. We're just trying to get it all mixed up, make sure there's no dry stuff in the corners, push the paddle all the way to the bottom. Okay, you ready with your hose. I'm gonna need more water. Really what I want is a pourable consistency. So you can see it's not too stiff. This one's a little soupy. I got a little aggressive, but it'll work. And that's all we do. It's self-leveling as well. It'll force all the water out. This stuff will be a little weaker than if I had mixed it with less water, but it'll still turn out to be a couple thousand PSI in about 15 minutes. All right, well, you can see this stuff's already getting solid. This stuff's getting solid. This is really incredibly brittle, so when it cures, You'll be able to just tap this stuff and it'll snap right off. We'll clean up, 
and then we'll show you how we set the flagpole because you're probably thinking, hey, that's a four inch pipe and we only have a three inch flagpole, it's gonna be all wobbly. We'll show you how we solve that problem while still making it removable later on. So we've got the old sleeve out, we've poured the new one and I would just like to say at this point in the video that the Haxman was completely wrong. Everything he told me about installing a flagpole was completely wrong and I feel cheated and lied to. Actually, that's not true at all. Because here's the thing that we get a lot on these videos. I know he fights it, I fight it as well. People see something and they think that that is the only way that there is to do something when sometimes you have to improvise because your conditions may be different than the ones shown in the video. My conditions were completely different than his. He got to start with the virgin ground. I had a chunk of concrete in there and we had to identify, adapt, and overcome which is upon you, if your conditions vary from the ones that are shown in the videos, then you may have to identify, adapt, and overcome and deal with those challenges. And don't be afraid to ask us how we would deal with those if the conditions are different, but please don't assume that because this is the way we're showing you in this video, that that means it works for everybody because conditions vary. And one other thing, I would like to amend my tools needed for this project to a hammer drill, a breaker, a reciprocating saw, a squiggly saw, concrete chisel, a level, a mixing title for your concrete, a jackhammer, a couple trips to Home Depot, water, lots of water, lawn chairs for all the spectators, and about six hours, six hours of hard manual labor. Um, so that's, that's the amended tool list if you're gonna undertake a project like this based on my new calculations. With that out of the way, we're gonna show you now because his pipe fit his, or his sleeve fit his flagpole exactly. We have a sleeve that is quite a bit larger. In fact, we will show you that here. We have a three inch flagpole and a four inch sleeve. So you can tell it's a little sloppy and we would not want this flagpole flopping her out. So we're gonna show you how to deal with that because this is very common in the flagpole industry. A lot of times, they will send you with a much larger sleeve and a flagpole and there's a secret to getting that so that it doesn't wobble around and is perfectly straight up and down and also leaves it so that it's removable later on if you ever need to remove this. So if you're wondering where this flagpole came from, I bought this from Colonial Flags. In fact, our company SWI has installed flagpoles for people. So if you need a flagpole installed, give one of our estimators a call. You'll notice that this flagpole is a single piece and it has a lot better cleat and also a much higher wind load rating than what you will find at the hardware stores. So we are simply going to put it in the hole like that. Ooh, that's loud. So the secret to installing your flagpole, once you've got a sleeve in place that's a little bit too big, is to use some sand and what works best is really dry masonry sand or you can do like we did and clean out your shop vac from your car that goes to the beach all the time and get the sand out of there so we've got this sand that uh, we have slowly accumulated over many trips to the beach and that's what we'll do we'll take this sand so once you've leveled it up you just slowly add sand which we've already leveled this up and we'll just top this off with this really fine sand, basically just filling this entire void here. And the nice thing is, as you can see, it doesn't matter that we're not exactly in the center because the sand will fill in all the way around there. And the whole key is to have that really dry sand because if it's dry, it's already basically compact. So we can wiggle this flagpole all over the place and you can see there's no wiggling down here at the sand. So uh, some good dry masonry sand or whatever sand you have evacuate your family beach rig and maybe get enough sand to do this it does not take a whole ton at all that's it we've basically added all the sand to this and it's done once you've done that and we could seal that off from rain or something but there's really no purpose to do that so once you've done that now we can string the flagpole and raise our flags <laughs> And with that, we have restored our yard to its former glory. So hopefully you enjoyed that and you understand that the Haxman did not mess up on his installation video. We showed you a couple of tricks 
in case your pipe's a little bit larger, how you can sand your flagpole in and still make it removable. So if your sleeve is bigger than your pole, you can get your flagpole vertical. And that also works really well if you need to re-level it later on or something happens. So other than that, if you're a contractor and you're coming to our channel, be sure to follow a successful contractor. Check that channel out. There's gonna be a lot of really great content. If you're a up and coming contractor or a contractor trying to do a better job, You'll get to follow my story from the very ground level, from scratch, as we build a company here in Florida without any connections, little to no money, and show people how they can become contractors if they're looking to get into the contracting business and hopefully avoid a lot of the mistakes that we made coming up. So all that coming up, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Until next time, you have a good dang day.